My name is Jamie Wetzel. I run Le Fay Rouge. Uh, well, my whole thing is that, like, you know when you were a kid and you had, like, Superman underwear and, like, now you don't? I make that. I don't make Superman underwear, but I make, like, weird stuff. So, like, Halloween dogs in cute costumes, that kind of stuff. And, like, who says growing up means that you have to give up fun? I wound up in sales after college because it was a leather craft store and I had fashion design degree and they're like, oh cool, you can talk to the sewing people. And it turns out I'm pretty good at sales. So I got furloughed from my corporate job back in like March of 2020. And I went, cool, I guess I'm just gonna sew forever then because I had the furlough money, which meant like I wasn't super worried about not being able to pay bills or anything anymore for a while. I was able to support myself through the pandemic and I could probably still do it now if I wanted to, but like the company I started working for in February is really great, so I don't want to. <laughs> okay, so process is find a really pretty fabric on the internet and go, ooh, I want to make something with that. Order said fabric, wait between three days and 12 weeks, depending on which brand I get it from, because I get a lot of very pretty custom stuff. Um, when it comes in, go, ooh, I forgot I ordered that. Get excited again. And then find, bring it in, see what laces I have that go with it, play around a little bit. Um, usually I make new samples when I'm reaching like boredom point of sewing orders because like I get a lot of orders for the same stuff and you, you kind of get bored of making the same thing over and over again. So make new samples, which involves cutting all the fabric, sewing on the trim, making sure that everything's finished, all of the edges are done, trimming any threads. That's my least favorite part. It's so annoying. And then taking photos and editing the photos and posting the photos and the description to whatever site I'm selling them on. It's a lot. <laughs> um, so when I'm looking at fabrics, I usually look for like something that strikes my eye, something that like I go, yeah, that's cool. So like, I don't know, I have a bunch here. Alien. I'm, it's pretty eye striking. <laughs> like, and then sometimes I look for stuff that's like a little bit more soft and feminine as well. That's more of a thing of lately than in the past. And that's mostly because I have a lot of trans clientele and I like to give them the, I always wanted pretty underwear experience that they didn't really get as when they came out usually. So I work independently mostly. Sometimes my studio mate Lauren will come in and she'll help me cut fabric. Originally the fabric I was buying was like seven to twelve dollars a yard and now I've upgraded and everything's like thirty dollars a yard but it's all really nice and like the quality difference is there and a lot of people who come to me are coming to me for comfort so they have something cute and comfortable that they can wear and feel pretty in and if the fabric's not good quality it's not going to be comfortable in in like literally everything I do there's an element of play at this point like I don't think I'm capable of not having an element of play in my life that sounds miserable and boring I work with like everything I can possibly like whatever the vibe is in the day I will go with so like usually, usually I'm sewing, but like uh, I've started designing my own prints lately. So we've got dumb possums and stuff like that. And somewhere around here, there's glitch skulls. That's oh, it's not the best quality print on that one, but like I've started doing my own artwork because I got bored of having to choose other people's artwork for prints all the time. You, you, you have to market yourself. I meet a lot of people at like burlesque shows and this isn't necessarily a platform, but I LARP and a lot of my community buys from me. So like I know a bunch of people who I met through LARPing. A lot of sales as a small business is networking, especially as an artist, because like if people don't know you exist and like who you are and what you do, then they're not interested in like, oh, here's this random anime photo so-and-so drew. Generally, I prefer online to on, in person just because it's a little bit easier for me because like communicating with people in person, setting up a shop, making sure everything's neat, nice and tidy. It's a lot of energy, whereas online I can be like, look, I took a photo of this cute thing. Do you like the cute thing? Would you like to buy the cute thing? OK, let me let me make it in your size. There we go. We're done. Um, I'm taking a break from Etsy as a whole 
because they've raised their seller fees again and I have enough of a following at this point that I think I can like just go with my own platform and leave it because I generate most of my own sales through Facebook and TikTok at this point. TikTok is kind of like if you take a business and you take every possible chaotic element to it and kind of condense it into seven seconds to three minute videos usually the shorter the better though because like you've got the duolingo owl who just does tiktok dances for fun and it's just stupid jokes that still relate to the world it's very dadaism as a whole uh, if you can think about like art forms and stuff in the past tiktok usually i end with a bunch of like queer people going, oh my god, I love your stuff. And Facebook, I have a friend who runs a corsetry page who had boomers commenting on her body shape and how it was wrong and unnatural. And she's like, I, I, my doctors say this is medically necessary, so stay out of my life. I think TikTok is a lot more open and kind. Facebook is slowly going away. Like if, it, if they were smart, they would turn themselves into an event coordinating thing and that's it. But, like, it's just kind of a cesspool at this point. Like, you can curate your own cesspool, but if you go out of it, it's awful. This whole state is hella gay. Like, I'm from Vermont originally, so, like, the concept of being bullied for being gay lasted about five minutes, and then the kid who did it got suspended. So, like, it wasn't really a thing where I came from, but, like, Massachusetts is also pretty darn gay. I have to actually think and consider how many straight people I know and am on friends with at this point and I don't think it's many. I got lucky and it's unfortunate that other people have not had that luck and I think that it's important to be able to uplift the others who have not had that luck. If you are, if you are born with privilege that is your duty to be like hey cool you're not get up here but it shouldn't be a barrier but it is. Queer community has always been pretty good. I think as a whole the pandemic to a lot of like body acceptance and a lot of gender acceptance because a lot of people for the first time were not performing for others and could be like oh wait a second i'm not a woman well what am i well i guess i have a whole week or two before i have to see another person so let's try wearing pants for a week i would rather partner and create something cool together with another artist who's doing a similar thing to what i'm doing than view it as competition because like together we can actually make cool things if we're not fighting and bickering and being petty about stuff but like i'm also not about to be like someone come up to me and be like oh hey i'm interested in doing the exact thing you're doing give me all of your patterns and where you buy your fabric and all of that for nothing and so long as you're like an established artist and you're working with together with other people i think that is good it's not totally symbiotic, but like there's a couple of prints I have that I when I posted them on TikTok, I bought them through Spoonflower, which is like a place where artists can put, upload their own work and make a little bit of money off of it for fabric. I uploaded the things I made to TikTok and the artists found me and were like, <gasps> and it was pretty cool. Um, but there's a lot of like online communities of just artists uplifting each other and each other's work which is really nice and really cool. Lowell's different for artists because they have Western Ave and Western Ave has affordable studios. So like maybe you can't afford a thousand dollars for your own art studio every month but like there's stuff I know there's spaces in here that are like 285 maybe less even and like Enough people have that like in their budget or like they can make just enough doing their own artwork that that makes it possible to have that separate space. And having that space is really good because like there's a different energy working in your house versus working in a space full of artists. And like if you walk around in the halls in here, you're going to see tons of different ideas, different art, and you'll just be inspired like walking for about five feet to the bathroom. It would be nice if Lowell or Worcester were able to both grow and change and maintain the communities that they have there already without it necessarily being gentrified, if that makes sense. Because I feel like a lot of cities are people like both Lowell and Worcester, people are like, oh, it's on the up and coming. That just means that rich white people are going to move there. That's not necessarily a good thing. Like it's important to maintain like bodegas and like tiny mom and pop shops and like the communities that were there in the first place and continue supporting them.
for artists in general, I think a lot of it is like starting out, it can feel really intimidating. Like, oh, I tried making this thing, but I don't think it's good compared to so-and-so's work. And comparing yourself to others is just a pitfall because it's not a race. Like art is a skill and the more you practice at it, the better you'll get. And the more of your own style you'll understand and you'll be like, oh, hey, cool. Now I get how I'm going to do that. And like that thing that's framed on the wall right there, that is the background I painted for something. Like I, I was painting lace and that's the background. You just got to kind of find yourself and go, well, this is what works and keep going with it and follow, follow what feels right. Sewing can be expensive. Sewing with knits can be more expensive because you generally need a better machine and they require significantly more skill than a lot of people realize because it's really easy to just sew a knit and have it like stretch out and wobble and look weird and stuff. Um, but the more you practice, the better you get. But having bills as a whole makes it harder to produce art because that means there's less money to throw into art supplies because art supplies are expensive. Um, but quick shout out, there is a place in Somerville, I don't remember the name, that you can get secondhand art supplies for really cheap. I started following one mantra and it's like probably the best thing to just keep going back to and that's do what you can with what you have where you are. Do you only have cardboard and a sharpie? Go to town. Do you have a, a sewing machine and some a very tiny space to sew in? Make underwear. It might not be the medium that you want to work with, but working within your limitations induces more creativity, I think. The more miserable you are at some at like your day job, the more energy draining it is, the harder it is to just go home and be like, cool, I'm going to do something fun for me. Because it's easy to just go home and be like, I'm just going to watch an hour of TV and then do something. And then you just fall down that hole for the rest of the night. You got to have the drive. That, that's really the core of it. And it's not hard to get. You just have to focus and like think about like, oh, hey, I want to do this thing in particular and keep going like, when your brain wanders away and goes, no, what if I watch TV or I order pizza? You go, no, 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 after thing. I have some level of anxiety and depression. So like, depending on the day, I might reach out to people and be like, hello, please validate me, friend. Like literally those words verbatim. But other days I'm like, no, no, I could fight God and I will for a stale bagel. So it, like, it, it really depends on the day and the community you have, I guess. I am on the internet with the at Lafay Rouge pretty much everywhere. Sometimes it's at Lafay Rouge Designs. Both usually lead you back to me. Um, if you want my website, lafayrouge.gay, I have a special domain. You have to be queer aligned for that one. Weird, who would have thunk that? Um, and I am on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. And very, 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 very rarely I will, I will enter the cesspool that is Twitter and post something.